Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a driving and a racing game in Unity and welcome to the 22nd and final episode of this series. In this episode we are going to build a quick little splash screen, we're going to check out a few settings to build the game, we're actually going to build and play the game and I'll discuss where we can go from here in your game development. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to stay up to date with everything else on the channel. And with that in mind, let's get to work on this final episode. So let's start by actually sorting out this green car because we still have it active and we don't want it active, do we really? We left it active like that in the last episode. So I'm going to do that and save the scene. And now what I'm going to do is file, new scene, and this is going to be the splash screen. So if you're not aware, a splash screen is generally a scene where you can display your name or your studio name, you know, just to kind of as you would expect to see for example Bethesda or Gearbox or you know something like that so let's go game object UI raw image I'm gonna have mine uh, stretched and I'm gonna have it black and all I'm gonna have is just me or rather my game studio logo on this scene so if we double click and zoom out we can see perfect now I'm gonna to go to textures and I'm gonna import three textures Two of them we're not going to be using just at this moment, however they will be used later on in this tutorial. So I'm just going to drag these across and just give you a little bit of pre-insight to what they are. Uh, the first one, this logo, is going to be what we use here in this scene. The other two, one is an icon and one is another splash image, however this is not relative to the splash screen we're creating. So on this raw image we need to create another UI object and this will be another raw image and we can drag and drop the logo of your studio onto here and if we zoom in we can see right there so all I'm going to do is just reposition the size of this logo uh, that looks okay and center it that looks even better and now we're gonna play around with our actual settings of the scenes this is where it can get a little bit tricky now ideally you would need to build a splash screen first however it's not too difficult to rearrange so firstly let's save our scene I'll control press s splash screen and if we go to file build settings and click add open scenes you'll see this one now comes up as five but let's change this to zero so everything has moved up one and again, it's not too difficult to deal with. We just have to remember these integers. In small games, it's not a bigger deal. And at this point, if you're developing following this uh, whole series along, you'll have only got the same amount of screens as I have. Uh, scenes, I should say. Because after here is where you take development to the whole other level. But as I say, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So scene zero is our splash screen. Scene zero means this is the first scene to load. So net, let's now create a script that will take us to our main menu. So let's go to scripts, right click, create, C sharp script, and we'll call this one splash to menu. And we've dealt with changing scenes before, so we know how this is going to work. We should all know that we need to put the namespace in using unity engine dot scene management, semicolon. And we'll get rid of void update because we don't need it and any annotations, we don't need them. We're going to do this in an I enumerator because we want to wait for a couple of seconds before we actually change over to our main menu. So in doing this, I enumerator and we'll call it to menu, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and then yield, return, new, wait for seconds and I'll just have it displaying for four seconds semicolon and then at that point we will go scene manager dot load scene and in brackets one because remember one is now our main menu to get this working we need to start the coroutine so start co routine and in brackets the name that we've put here so to menu up close bracket close bracket semicolon and save and now what we need to do is just attach this script to pretty much any object in this scene so we can happily sit on the main camera so drag and drop and now when we press play <coughs> excuse me we should view our splash screen for four seconds and then head to our main menu 
There we go. Click anywhere to begin. Excellent. Okay, so next thing, we'll just quickly change a couple of things in our main menu. So let's go to main menu. Save that scene, yes. And remember our button object, we need to go on a button option up here. So we need the button option script. So we can double click it from the hierarchy, uh, sorry, the inspector panel while selected from the hierarchy. And we need to make sure that we add one to every one of these scenes, right here, uh, these methods right here. So one now becomes two, zero becomes one, two becomes three, three becomes four and four becomes five and save that script. So remember at this point, what we're doing is resetting all the values that we previously had. As I say, in a game this size at this point, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter too much. When you have lots and lots and lots and lots of scenes, it's then you need to start keeping track of your scenes. So let's quickly change to, uh, which one should we go to now? Credits. Let's quickly check our credits and credit finish there. Again, we need to change this to one, save. And let's go to the next scene, which is going to be track select, I believe. Yes, so down here, track select, button object, uh, button option. I think it's all going to be the same here, isn't it? I think we should be taken to the correct places. So red car, race mode, Jimmy circuit. Yes, everything's working fine. So that's all we really need to do. Just a couple of changes with the numbers. Okay, so next let's take a look at our options within the game. If we go to edit and go to project settings and go to player, now that isn't the player that you would think it is. It means the actual player, the executable file that the game is in. So company name, whatever yours is. So JV Game Studios, product name, Jimmy Driving Pro, whatever. Default icon. So we brought this in previously. It was this drive icon. So if we go back to our settings player, we can drag and drop this icon here. Cursor, don't need to worry because ideally if it's on a PC, we're going to have a mouse. If it's going to be on mobile, we'll have a touchscreen. All buttons are touchscreen, so it's, you know, it's easy to deal with. So let's go down a couple of options. We have here for PC, we have for iPhone, and we have for Android and Facebook. Every one of these has relatively the same kind of options, i.e. resolution and presentation. And if you fill them in here on the PC, they will transfer across naturally to the other platforms. And remember, in the file and build settings, we're building for PC at the moment. However, you can build for other platforms if you so wish. So let's start with resolution and presentation couple of options here, but by default, Unity is actually quite specific on what it has here. And it's quite nice with how it actually deals with them and places them how you would expect it to be. So for a beginner, it's best to leave it as it is and then build your actual game, which we'll do in a little minute. And you'll be able to play around with the different options you have. Icon is just transferred it from what we have here. So we don't need to worry about that. Splash image. This is where, <coughs> excuse me, my voice went then. This is where this comes in. Drag and drop onto here. Now, like I said, you may think this is a splash image, but we've already done that, Jimmy. We've already done that. We've just created that scene. This is a little different. This is what appears when you start the application. So we'll get to that again in a couple of minutes. It'll all make sense once we get to the end of this tutorial. Uh, splash screen, we can't actually change simply because, uh, well, this is the free version, but we've already manually created our splash screen so we don't need to worry a couple of other options to play around with if you want to and other settings once again it's nothing too drastic that we have to worry about you know it's again unity sets this up quite nicely so it's not really worth playing around with it too much not until you get real deep development and vr settings even though it's labeled as xr you don't need to worry about it if you want to do this in virtual reality Yep, go for it. But if not, then we don't need to worry. Uh, a couple of things to note with, for example, Android on publishing settings. If you want to publish to the Play Store, you will need to create a new key. And all this basically is, is just a way for the Google Play Store to accept and recognize what this is to just to confirm. You, do, you know, it's 
If you know a little bit about this, it's okay. But if not, Google has some fantastic documentation on what this actually is. Uh, again, everything else is the same, transferred over. Splash image, again, if you're building for Android, this will be your splash image. If not, you know, it's, it's entirely up to you. Uh, so I'm going to build this for PC, Mac, and Linux to test out. So if I go to edit, and if I go to, um, I'll tell you what, let's deal with preferences first, because here, before I go any further, if you go to external tools and scroll down, if, for example, you want to build for an Android device, you have to install all these here, these three options. And you can click these download buttons and it will take you to the place you need to download the application and install to create that SDK for your Google Play Store upload. Uh, a couple of other things that we can play around with. If we go to edit, project settings and quality, you'll see here, these are the options that you have. Generally, you can see, for example, Fantastic has these selected. You can play on these devices and you can select here how quality, how quantitative you want it to be. You can even add your own. You can even rename what it currently has. So the best option is currently named as Fantastic. So let's change this to Jimmy Ultra. And you'll see how this actually behaves in Unity in a couple of minutes. So they're the only real things to play around with, at least for a beginner. There's different things to work around with here, but they're not really too important as it stands. So I'm going to save my entire project. Hold control, press S. And now let's go to File, Build Settings, and let's test this game out by clicking Build and Run. And what this will do is build its own executable game. So if we click it, it'll ask us to save it. Let's call this Jimmy Game and click save. Now, depending how big your game is, this may take a minute, it may take a couple of minutes to kind of build together. So while this is happening, I'm gonna quickly discuss where we can go from here with game development. So everything we've learned in this series up until now, you can take, manipulate, modify, and apply this knowledge to accomplish different effects and scenarios within your game. Like we dealt with unlocking cars, like I say, you can do that with tracks. You can have different currencies, all using the same method. So if you apply the knowledge that you've learned up until this point, continue that own development on your, your own, in your own time, you'll be able to build up with many tracks as you want, as many different currencies as you want, as many cars as you want, and never be afraid to explore the asset store because there's some fantastic things in there. If you have any problems, please leave a comment below. There's a fantastic amount of people that will always be happy to help. And I have hundreds upon hundreds of other tutorials to help you accomplish different things within Unity. So please feel free to check any of them out and you're bound to learn a couple of new things that maybe we haven't covered in this series. So I think looking through this series and maybe taking a couple of the mini tutorials that I have, you'll be able to build your game no problem. So. Our game has now appeared. Excellent. You can see here graphics quality. This is where we've set Jimmy Ultra. And this splash image right here. Remember what I said, it's not the splash screen. It's the image which is applied to the executable file that we see right here. Now, at this point, we may come across some bugs and glitches that we haven't seen in the engine itself. This is why building your game is absolutely necessary, at least on a PC even if you intend to only publish on mobile devices. So now let's just click play and let's see how this turns out. So we should see everything flow quite nicely. Here's our splash screen. We should flow into our menu. Click anywhere to begin. And now let's play a game. Let's select our car. So you can see here, we have a bit of a glitch because how this has all appeared. So we need to modify how these appear within our game. So let's click race mode and we can't click Jimmy circuit, but you will be able to if you change that setting. So Alt F4 to get out of that. So like I say, that's where we can see there is a glitch. So let's take this and we have to recognize that we don't want to stretch both ways. So let's change the stretch to only be this way. So the same will apply for select mode we need to change the stretch to this option. 
And the same with track select. Change to this stretch option. Let's resave our project and try rerunning. Once you've rerun, uh, rather run your game once, it shouldn't take too much longer to run a second time because generally all the assets are in there, it's ready. So it just take a couple of seconds or a minute or so just to kind of piece itself together. And as we're saying before we started playing, uh, if you need any more help on this, if you need some direction on where to go, please check out my other tutorials. There is a lot, just an absolute insane amount of content that you can learn from. So let's try this again. Hopefully we shouldn't have the same problem. But this is what I mean by testing what you've made. Because if you'd have just built this for mobile devices, you would have had that error. But now, hopefully, we can see we're able to do that. Everything looks good in our game view. So far, so good. So, I'm just going to go around this corner. Oh, oh, yeah. So, let's come out of that. There we go. So, guys, that is it. That is all there is to know, realistically, about, at least for beginners, to create a drive in a racing game. And as I say, it is important for you to apply the knowledge you've learned to accomplish different things. It's Sometimes it's not really worth me teaching some things because the logic can be applied from something else to learn it. For example, there's no point in me creating third, fourth, fifth place positions because the same logic would be used as creating first and second. So, guys, that is the end of this series. And... I've honestly enjoyed it up to this point. It's been fantastic. I've seen some great comments, questions, everything from this series. And if you've enjoyed watching this series, please don't forget, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon. And if you've really enjoyed this series and you fancy helping me out as a content creator, I have a Patreon page and it'd be fantastic, even if it's the lowest tiers, because any support I get really helps me create these sorts of tutorials free for everybody. So guys, once again, I've got to thank you all for coming to this point, for watching, and I would love to see your final products. And hopefully I will see you around in another one of my tutorials. Guys, thank you very much for watching.